What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review for the real Housewives of Potomac season four, episode 13. So look, um, we'll pick up this episode with Giselle trying to make amends with Ashley. She's like, you know, Ashley took offense to some things I said, and I get it, you know, but I got your back, girl. Why don't you come hang out with me and Robin at my new house? I'm going to show Robin around. Why don't you come out? We can just talk, chop it up a little bit. Ashley was like, I know Giselle messy, but she's she Giselle, and I do think she's my friend. So I'm going to go on over there with her. Anyway. Um, Candace and Chris are house shopping. Of course, Candace is looking at houses in the 2.5 million range. Chris is like, to 2.5 million and she was like well i mean that's just the asking price babe i mean and he was like look and basically what he was told telling her was look i know we need a house but we don't need a two million dollar house i don't want us to struggle we don't have to struggle i mean i got this and i got that and you got this and you got that and then i could get into my trust fund so the producers are like well tell us about the trust fund now the answer she should have said was that ain't none of your business because you don't really talk about that kind of stuff. But Ashley was like, I mean, what about it? Well, I mean, what are the terms of the trust fund? I don't know. Well, well what are you going to get the trust fund? I don't know. I just know that I have a trust because my mom did very well. And there's a trust there. And I don't know when I'm supposed to get it. I mean, I don't know the details of it. Um, And I really don't want to ask my mom for the trust. But I just know it's there if we need it. So let me understand. You're looking for a house that's probably out of a comfortable range that you should be looking at. And you're, the way you're going to afford to get this house is to buy, is to get the money from your mother who you're trying to get away from financially to begin with. Yes, if she set a trust aside for you, whenever the money comes is whenever the money comes. But for you to go to your mother to say, hey, I need to get into my trust so that I can buy this house that I can't really afford. So that I don't live under your house, your rules anymore with the house that you paying for. Are y'all understanding how damn crazy this whole thing sounds? And Chris is trying to tell her, look, we don't need to do all that if we just look at a house that ain't this damn expensive. How about that? You can find a really nice... Now, D.C. is an expensive area. But you can find a really nice house in a really nice neighborhood for, you know, $1 million. Yeah. Anyway. Um... But once again, Candace, you're coming off sound like a spoiled ass brat. I just. So Giselle, Ashley, and Robin meet up at Giselle's house. And we get a chance to see the inside. Looks like they've already started cleaning up a little bit because it certainly looks, when they pulled up, it already looked a lot better on the outside than when they were showing it to us. And I'm sure they were showing us the worst views because they wanted the house to look as horrible as possible, you know, so that Giselle is buying this huge fixer upper, you know. But it definitely looked a whole lot better than when we first saw it. And so we got a chance to see the inside a little bit. Daggone Robin had to go to the bathroom. Of course, them damn toilets ain't probably been used in 20 years. Giselle didn't even know whether the water was cut on or not. But, you know, when you got to go, you got to go. It definitely is dated on the inside. I definitely see where Giselle wants to do a lot of stuff to bring stuff up to date and sort of modernize it or what have you. Um... But it look, it definitely looks like it has a lot of potential, you know, in a nice, nice house, nice neighborhood, a lot of space. Uh, they go out back and they pop the bottles and then they get messy. You let me tell you something. Them daggone, them damn green-eyed bandits. Now, for the purposes of the show, they are beautiful because they messy as hell, okay? But in the in the grand scheme of being real friends and just not causing more drama, they are a mess. So they're going to tell Ashley what um, Katie said about her being dumb and that whole situation with Katie's boyfriend thinking that Michael was sort of coming on to her and um, hitting on her or whatever. Then they going, then Ashley's going to tell them about the conversation she had with Monique and how um, Candace basically, I mean, how Monique basically threw Candace on the bus and let Ashley see all the text messages from Candace and what Candace said and didn't say and made it seem like Ashley was just sitting off to the side, um, not saying anything. I mean, uh, Monique was sitting off to the side, not saying anything. And, you know, Robin was like, look, were we talking about the situation? Yeah, we were. Everybody had an opinion. Everybody had something to say. 
were we relishing in it? Were we taking it as a joke, you know, making fun of the situation? No. And so I was just like, these messy hoes. So now, of course, they done put a battery in Ashley's back about um, Katie. And now Robin and, and the other thing that they brought up was how Monique was saying how, you know, Rob, how Giselle and Robin just don't support her. Like, for whatever reason, they just don't like her. And they just don't seem to respect or have any empathy for what she has going on in her life. And, you know, just because she's financially stable or things are going okay with her, it doesn't mean that she doesn't have real issues. It doesn't mean she doesn't have life issues going on. And she just doesn't understand why they just don't like her. And I'm like, here we go. So y'all know where we going with that. So then um, we we get to the house with um, Monique and Chris and the kids. And Monique is like, look, my doctor done already told me that I'm not going to make it, you know, that I'm probably not going to make it to the end, that my water's going to probably, that it's going, my water's going to break early. And, excuse me. Um, and we don't even have a plan in place. Like, what's going to happen if my water breaks early? What do we have? What do we have in place? We don't have nothing in place. What are we going to do? And Monique, and I thought it was funny because this whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, wow, it's great that the cameras caught all of this. Like, they just so happened to be filming that day and happened to catch all this on tape because we saw the previews last week where it looked like Monique water was breaking. So Monique is walking up the steps now, and I'm thinking to myself, she's complaining about how her pelvis was hurting so bad and how hard it was for her to walk up the steps. And I'm like, don't they have an elevator? And Chris said the same thing. I said, well, why you ain't take the elevator, babe? I know, I know, but I'm halfway up the steps now. He was like, you done walked up two steps. Like, you could turn around and get on the elevator real quick. And I'm thinking to myself, hell, I'd be staying on that daggone elevator if I was in as much pain as, and Monique looked like she was struggling, you know. So they go up the steps and they get the kids ready for bed. Monique said, let me go get my pregnancy ball, you know, so I can sit down, you know, while the kids are doing this. And next thing you know, she starts yelling for Chris because her water done broke. And she's um, panicking and she calling the doctor, baby, Kristen called 911 for the ambulance to come and get him. He said, it's too soon. It's too soon. He didn't call the ambulance. Next thing you know, Monique starts laughing, telling him to put the daggone phone down. She said, I didn't know you were going to call the ambulance. I didn't know you were going to call 911. She joking. She's playing a prank. Chris ain't find that shit funny at all. Okay, Chris was like, this, that, that wasn't funny. That what? I, I, I didn't find nothing funny about this whole scenario. And Monique was like, but what happened if this were real? We don't have a plan. We don't know what we're going to do. I don't even have a backpack. And so she started saying how, you know, I'm going to pack my bag and we're going to put some things in place so that, you know, if and when it happens, we already know I'm not going to make it to my due date. So if and when it happens, we'll be good to go. We'll be ready. Over at the Huger house, Karen's having family dinner with the kids. Um, she said, you know, with with um, the daughter being in college and Brandon working in Virginia, they don't always have time to do it, but they have in there, was it Friday night, Saturday night, uh, seafood dinner um, with the family. And they got to, you know, they were just having a good moment. You know, I will say this, um, Karen's daughter needs some glasses because she had that computer. Every time they showed her with that computer, she was this close to the screen. Baby, get it. And if you're supposed to wear glasses, put them on. And if you didn't have your contacts or whatever, baby, get your glasses. Because you're going to tell you, you're going to tear them eyes up trying to squint and be all up on that screen like that girl. But they had a good moment. They were talking about the, her perfume and, and all of that good stuff. They just like it had a good little family, little family moment. It was cool. Michael and Ashley go out to dinner. And basically, Michael, you know, it's, Ashley's like, you know, I'm just glad this is over. I'm glad we got that monkey off our back. That we can go out and have a good time and just have that put all that behind us. And Michael was like, Yeah, it's all good. He was like, But let me tell you something how I'm not really feeling them girls you roll with. He was like, I really feel like they didn't have your back like they should have had your back. Like, I just, I'm just not feeling that. And I'm really just not, I'm still not happy about how that whole thing went down with kind of how they treated you when we were going through what we were going through. Michael, ain't nobody checking for you because ain't nobody, here's why ain't nobody have Ashley's back because ain't nobody believed you. Nobody believed you. So that's why nobody was the, nobody believed you, Michael. Um, then they actually started talking about wanting to meet her father and, you know, um, going to Atlanta, well, going to Georgia. They never said Atlanta, going to Georgia. And Michael was like, I just don't think that's a good idea. Like, I, I just don't like that idea of you going down there. Like, and I, I kind 
of feel my I understand closure. I I mean, clearly I, I'm one of the people that need closure. I understand closure. But I think this man has made it clear that he's not interested. Whatever his reasons are for not being interested. And I know that can be a very hurtful thing and hard to accept. Um, but you know, let that sleeping dog lie, boo. And I think, you know, in this case, I think Michael might be telling you right. Let that go. Let that go. But you know, Ashley said, look, I want to go down there. This is what I have to do. And he said, well, then maybe not take your mother. She said, oh, no, no, no. She's the one person that I want with me. She said, I can't do this by myself. And she's the only person that I trust enough to do it with me. I get it. I get that too. You know, I get that her mother being the one for her to go. So then we see her reach out to her aunt, um, her brother's sister. And she said, look, he ain't talked to me. He stopped speaking to me. So I don't know what the deal is. I don't know what his problem is with me. But she did tell Ashley, look, I will help you. You know, you want to come down here? I will help you do whatever it is you need to do um, to get this closure from your father, to speak to your father. So um, they're going to go down there and um, meet up with the aunt and the uncle. Okay. Katie's having one of her galas, honey. Now, Katie didn't invite. She invited Monique. Monique said she wasn't coming because she said she can't fit none of her, her dresses. She said she can't get her booty belly into none of her dresses, so she ain't coming. Um, it ends up being them Green Eye Bandit uh, sisters. Of course, Katie's there, her mother, and then Candace brings her mother. Candace said, my mother's with me because uh, she's here. She's always here. <laughs> I said, Lord, have mercy. That daggone Candace. And she tried to give her mama a two drink um, maximum. Talking about some. Now you have a two drink limit tonight. Her mother was like, "Oh, really? That's what you think? Oh, okay." Um, and then Miss Giselle, she gonna roll up talking about some. Well, um, is therapy helping? Is that the kind of stuff people ask? Do do people just ask that in polite society? Do 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 we just roll up on somebody and be like? So how's that therapy working for you guys? Like, is that what we do? Um, and of course, Ashley's mother was like, therapy for who? For her? She's the one that got the problem. And she said, she said, look, Cand Candace is just a brat. But Giselle threw it back at her. She said, well, you created that brat. You right, I did. You right, I did. So um, they don't know what the damn charity is for. They don't know what the gala is for. They just there. So then... Um, Katie introduces her mom to Candace's mom, and they get to talking about boundaries, honey. And you know, remember, Katie's mama done cut her off. She stopped paying bills. She stopped paying mortgage. She stopped paying all of that. So Katie's mother was like, oh, well, I can teach you about some boundaries now. I can I can show you how to cut these boundaries. And I'm like, yeah, that ain't the conversation Candace wants you to have. She don't want mama to cut them financial boundaries, right? She just want my mama to stop. She just want her mama to stop smacking her with purses. That's what she wants. <laughs> um... Um, they asked Katie what the charity is for. Katie was like, I don't know. Um, Katie didn't even invite Ashley. And Katie was like, did I forget? Katie be playing dumb. Katie ain't as dumb as she be playing. She's like, did I forget? She said, well, you know, she got so much going on. I didn't think she did. So then they got the boyfriend to explain a little more in detail about the situation with Michael and this phone situation. What it sounds like is the boyfriend had two or three phones. And Michael was like, well, if I call you, which which line are you going to pick up first? And he said, well, I normally pick up my business line first. And then Michael made a comment about, well, if I call you, you better pick up no matter what line I call on or something like that. It's a weird, excuse me, it's a weird thing to say to somebody, but I don't know if I would quite take that as flirting. I might take it as rude. I don't know. Neither, I don't know. So then, of course, they went on putting the battery in Candace's back because Candace had bought a gift for Monique. So then they started telling, they told Candace about what Ashley said about Monique showing her them text messages. And, well, why would she do that? Who does that? Who just shows text messages? Why would she throw you under the bus like that? And, of course, Candace is sitting there like, mm, it is a little shady. I don't know why she would do that. You know, and I was like, here we go. They go them green eye bandits, honey. Keeping it moving and shaking and moving it all around the room. Um, let me say this, y'all. I thought about this the other day. I think that Candace got such a battery in her back about Ashley. 
because Chris did see what went down. And I think Kristen told Ashley that what Michael was accused of, he did. And I think that's why Candace had such a battery in her back because she know what really went down. I just, that's just my two cents. Cause I just, I just, I don't understand why Ashley, I mean, why Candace just got such a hard on for Ashley. Like, I just don't get it. But anyway, um, So, like I said, so anyway, so Candace, of course, is just sitting there on the sidelines trying to figure out why, you know, why um, Monique would throw her under the bus or would say what she said to um, Ashley and make it seem like, you know, she was just out there by herself. But it sounds like you were. I mean, from the text messages, it sounds like, but we know this whole season you had a battery in your back. So we're in, I just want to say Atlanta, we're in Georgia now with, um, Ashley the meta with her aunt and uncle seemed like they're having a good time. Her mom is with them. They're having a good time. And the uncle was like, look, I have mixed feelings on this whole situation because I think your mother did the right thing to keep you away from your father. Your father has a lot of demons. He got a lot of shit with him. And I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing that he wasn't in your life. I said, uh oh. And I heard, I peeped it. I don't know if Ashley caught up on it. But I peeped when the uncle said, your mother kept you from your father. So it sounds like maybe the father not being around may not be as involuntary as we were led to believe. I mean, as voluntary as we were led to believe. But I'm going to let that one go. Maybe I just read too much into it. Um, But he ultimately agrees to help Ashley. He says, look, if this is what you need, I will help you in any way I can. You know, I'm glad that we were able to stay in touch. I'm glad that your mom kept my number so that we would have some sort of relationship and whatever basically happens between your father, I'm glad that we're in each other's life, basically. Um, and so we see how they planning it out. They setting it all up. And Ashley was like, well, I think my aunt should knock on the door. So when he opens the door, that's who he sees first. And then we sort of just kind of spring it on him. I don't know if showing up in somebody's house out of the clear blue is the best idea, that, especially after they made it clear that they're not interested in seeing you. But we'll, we'll see because that's what episode is so we'll see what goes down next week y'all let me know what y'all think drop it in the comments please